Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about an HR topic that is actually requested by one of you. Um, so it's actually not about Excel. If you're looking for Excel um, tips, this one in this one, I'm the only thing I'm going to cover is a scatter chart. So you can close down the video if this is not what you're looking for. But if you are looking to increase your HR knowledge, I would encourage you to stay. So um, the question that was asked was, um, how do we analyze the internal equity for uh, my jobs or my employees? And uh, with this question, this is there's actually a lot of interpretation of what internal equity means. So I propped what he's looking for, and uh, it turned out I, that he's actually looking for something to analyze about pay compression, which means that um, whether the employees tenure um, is uh, positively or negatively correlated to their pay. Um, so I think that's a very interesting and very common topic. So what I'm doing today is that I'm going to use this set of fake data, of course, um, and I'm going to basically show you how I would approach this question if I was asked by my manager. So let's say um, we have this um, organization and well, you know what, like actually your manager is asking you, oh, you know what, um, I heard that there's a lot of complaints from our uh, senior engineers saying that they're not paid equally. Uh, can you investigate into it? So this is the data that you're given. Uh, to start with, I want to emphasize a few things. So first, um, with your employee da data set, um, I, you would want to make sure that their job grades are the same to the minimum. And to the minimum, I, I mean that um, they should at least be at the same job grade, your internal grade, which means that they would have a reasonably close uh, level of experience and expertise. And uh, ideally, they would also, if your organization is formal enough, you would also have a job code for each of the jobs. So for example, in my case, let's say my senior en um, engineer of say, uh, um, chemical is the job code is one just row five, but my senior engineer of mechanical, the job code is one, two, three, four, six. So that would be something different. So ideally, before you start analyzing, you want to make sure the constants are the constants. So you want to make sure you have the constants um, lined up so that you can analyze the parts that's different. So ideally, you would hope that your job codes are exactly the same. However, I understand that in reality, um, some organizations might not have job codes really cleaned up. Some organizations, um, um, you, um, you, you may not even have job codes. You might just need to handpick by job uh, titles um, in smaller organizations, for example. And that's OK. Um, as long as you do your part of due diligence to make sure that the people that you're comparing with has m as much similar job duties and responsibility as possible. OK. so. That's lined up. Then let's look into their tenure. And you can see here, I actually have three lines, three columns of data here. And this is also what I want to bring to your attention. So when we talk about employees' tenure, of course, the first thing that we immediately think about is their hired, is the tenure since they're hired it. Um, so this is basically like, of course, where um, how many years they stayed in the company. However, um, two other dates that's actually more relevant and important for this analysis is actually their date in their job grades or better, the best date in the job code. And the reason for that is although for some people, those um, days can be exactly the same. Uh, if someone stays in the company for a long time, they can actually make progression uh, in their job grades, and they can also make job transfer um, between jo different job codes. So if, like for example, um, this, um, for example, if we look at this one person, um, if you just look at the higher date, that person would have been in the company for about 17 years. However, within that 17 years, 
um, he actually only stayed in this job for 14 years. So I would say for him, the relevant years of experience or tenure for him is actually 14 instead of 17. Um, I know that those two dates can be hard to get for a lot of organizations. A lot of organizations, especially if you don't use extra system, um, you might not track this very closely. Therefore, you might not have this data ready. But I would say for internal equity kind of analysis, this is really, really important to get. If your sample size, if your employee population is not that big, I would even recommend you to just collect those information manually um, because it's worth it. It tells you a more closer information, accurate information about your internal equity or pay compression issue. An uh, alternative thing that I have also seen companies getting, but I know it's really hard to get, is actually the years of relevant experience for this person. By that, I mean actually, for example, this one person um, has been in the company for 11, uh, well, actually has been in this job for 11 years. However, how many years have that person actually worked in this relevant field? And that includes the years before they join your organization. Uh, my number here is actually not accurate. I, I, I use random, random number, but then for example, the years of, let's say if this person um, has worked in this kind of job and industry uh, for three years before joining your company, um, his or her years of relevant experience should actually be like 11.7 plus 3, so about like 15 years. So I know that some companies uh, or for some certain jobs, they also collect this information for their internal, for any kind of internal uh, ana analysis that they do. Uh, depends on the job. Some jobs, for some jobs, it might not as relevant. But for some job, like for example, lawyers, like how many years have you had uh, the experience after you, you're caught into bar? For some kind of jobs, it can be really critical and sometimes you might even need to dig into the resume just to calculate how many years of experience, relevant work experience they have. Okay, so that's that. Um, I hope that I cover the tenure front for this analysis. Um, and then you would see I have the base pay information for, for you. And uh, you can also know that I actually have one additional column, which is performance rating. I have this in here because I believe that by now, uh, um, the majority of organizations would agree to pay for performance, which means that for the same job, someone with a higher performance rating, let's say like rating A, versus someone with an average performance rating, say B or C, um, should get a higher pay. And this can be like the, and the base pay uh, can be higher for someone with a less tenure, even as long as um, the performance rating is outstanding. So I think this philosophy, this pay philosophy uh, uh, should be agreed by most organizations, at least like by all the organizations that I have worked with. Um, so um, with that premises in mind, um, this will also be part of an, our analysis. So first, okay, so now let's, uh, we have sorted our data and then let's see how our analysis is for um, our internal equity. So in this scatter chart, which essentially, um, you see I built this uh, chart essentially by selecting um, my X value as my tenure and my Y value as my base pay and then it pops out all the dots that I have. So just in the idea, purely mathematical world, you would expect there's gonna be a 45 degree line somewhere here, right? So basically the more tenure you have, the higher base salary you would get in an ideal world. Um, and um, in, in terms of the, and the reality, it's never that clean. So for example, for this organization, I would say if I just look at this chart, it, it doesn't seem too bad because it's, it does seem that there's, even that the dots are all over the place, it does seem that there's an upward trending line in this chart. 
I know that there are some employees with lower tenu uh, tenures having a higher compensation, but I think that's okay because we're not saying, like this is not a union world. Like we're not saying that if you um, if your tenure is lower, lo lower, you have to be paid lower than the ones with higher tenure. Um, there are um, uh, people that's lower paid than people with like less tenure, but um, that happens in reality too. So just looking at this, I wouldn't say there's a huge issue. However, if I want to look at my data more closely by performance rating, this is how I would get. So you can see that here um, in this chart, I'm selecting the same dots. All the dots are the same as the previous one. However, I color them differently based on the performance rating. So for example, my top rating employees are the red dots. And my average employees are my Bs, my blues. My Cs are the gray ones, I have two are the gray ones, and my new employees, which are those two uh, yellow dots. So let's see what this chart tells us in terms of internal equity. So I actually in this one, I do see a pay compression issue. So if you look at my new employee, we they are people who have been here for less than a year. Um, they have not moved across like to any different roles. They're paid around like like a hundred to uh, one one hundred and ten k thousand. However, I have employees who are who have more tenure um, with an average employee rate, uh, performance rating, which is not bad at all. Like that's most of the people who are paid lower than them. So if the job is the same. If they're doing the same thing, those people have a better rating, well, have a pretty um, average rating, has more tenure, then I need to get a reason why those people are paid than your new people. This happens a lot, and this is actually called pay compression, which means that your employees with lower tenures are actually paid by <laughs> higher than employees with higher tenures. So unless there's any kind of reasonable examinations, those are my question marks, those are my issues, and I need to fix this as soon as possible or at least in the next pay cycle. So that's one. And then now let's look at um, our C rating people, which are the people who didn't perform as well. So those people are here. And interestingly, they're not, you would think they should be paid lower, but they're not. They're actually paid in the middle of our average employees, and they're even higher than one of my top rating employee. And I consider that to be not reasonable, or at least not beneficial for your organization. So if this happens for the same job, you, you need to give me an explanation, like why someone with a rating C can be paid higher than someone with rating A. Um, and there's also similar stories when we, when we compare our rating A uh, employees and rating B. So this one, it seems that this top employee is paid higher, but actually there are also others that's paid higher and whose tenure is actually less. And my other top pay, uh, top rating employees are actually in the middle of my average. Like they are not paid in any way advent uh, adventurous than my average people. So if this is how you reward your top performer, how would you expect them to stay motivated working for you? How would you expect them to uh, put in extra efforts if they are getting pretty much the same thing as the lower rating employees? So um, this is not a pay compression issue, but this is definitely an internal pay equity, uh, internal equity, not pay equity, internal equity issue that you should look into. If you have only one or two cases like that, it might be really just that one person or that one year that this happens, it can be exception. But if this happens for multiple people or even multiple years, if you compare their multiple year performance rating, that's definitely an issue that you need to look into and fix. Um, so, okay, so I think this is what I would um, 
do when I look at my um, internal acne and pay compression issue. And um, I hope this is helpful to you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you very soon.